Hi, I'm John Darren with Coquille Valley Sword Group, and today we're continuing our series on ways you can improve your kata in solo practice. Uh, today we're going to specifically be talking about how you can uh, begin to uh, recognize and address movements that give away your intention, uh, movements that reveal, right, what you're going after. So, the if you do kata, and kata is great for this, uh, it's one of those things that looks like a flaw, but is actually a really, really useful uh, idiosyncrasy. Uh, because kata is pre-planned, you already know what your partner is going to do. And you already, because you know that in advance, you're mind picks up more readily any motion that indicates that they're going to go where you expect them to go, right? Um, now, uh, you really start noticing this once you're on Uchidachi's side of the kata, right? Once you've, you've, you've done your, your sasen and, you know, your teacher's like, okay, you know, we're going to be the bad guy, here's the bad guy part. Um, what you'll see, because again, when you're uchidachi, your shidachi is your 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 kohai, your, your junior, right? And so, with less experience, they're more prone to make uh, exaggerations of of the things that we're going to be talking about. So it's it's a good time to to find and see. It also teaches your eye to start to pick up uh, on the opponents revealing themselves. Um, when it's big and gross, and then as your skill progresses with each kata, right, the slack gets taken up until, by the end, you're catching uh, very subtle shifts in their body uh, to the point to where you might not be consciously aware, able to sort of verbally go, oh, I knew he was going to go this direction because this thing his body did, but rather you'll develop first an intuitive sense of danger. Right, a little spidey scent, and you're like, ooh, I know what's coming, I know what's bad, kind of thing. So, uh, using kata as the example, the place that we see it first, and the type that we see first, uh, let's say with sasen, right? So, shidachi's coming, bum, 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 they're gonna cut, uchidachi's over here, new kid in town, he's got his little gate on no kamai, he's getting ready to go, he starts to go, he takes his three steps, one, two, three, okay. three, <laughs> and they just start shifting their weight on that foot, even though it's the foot that they're going to go to, because they're shifting towards the direction that they're doing, right? Uh, this is, this is super big, and it's because uh, we have no way of preventing a subtle, I'm exaggerating so you can see, uh, shift in body weight from side to side as we walk. I mean, we can get, uh, we can get, you know, smaller, and there are people that can get it much, much smaller than me. Um, but it's always going to be there. And with beginners, because they're so focused on where they want to go, they just drop that weight. I want to get out of the way of that sword. I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit huh, before the sword cuts even come, right? So, in your work, try and keep your weight centered while you're you're moving through the katas, right? The next thing that we see a lot is hip pointing. So, let's say that we're doing ukiragashi again. Uchidachi is coming, and they're just going to pop straight down. Shidachi is going to uh, we'll go this way escape off to the side. And so they'll take those three steps. One, two, three, right? And they're like, oh God, I want to dodge the sword this way. They want to go this way. And they might be like just deadlocked with their face, like, oh yeah, oh yeah. But their hips are already running away. Already just like, oh, get me out of here. Uh, sometimes you'll even see uh, one, two, oh, I can see him, let's see. You'll see that uh, lead foot on the third step sort of come to the center line, like, oh, 
you have no idea where I'm going, right? So again, in your work, let your, let your hara, right? Let, let your core, your cushion, your hips, really sort of, da, 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 da. these are the driving wheels, right? Not up here, down here, right? Da, 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 right? And we get ready, boom, we're nice and square, even, right? We can go any direction, because as you progress in the kata, Uchidachi is going to start getting some wild hairs, and they're going to spring shit on you, right? That's not in the kata, uh, especially if you're looking a little lazy, right? So, keep your focus, keep your center, prepared for anything. Try not to pre-plant. Yes, kata is 100% choreographed and pre-planned, generally. Um, try to forget that, right? You know what you're going to do. You, you, you have your motion, but just, like, forget it for a little bit. Right? You come up to it, pop boom, and you're like, what's he doing? He's attacking, and then all of a sudden, BAM! And you make your work. Right? You'll be better for it. It's tricky. Um, and so it's, it's good to do it in solo first, because once you get a feel for it, it's like learn to play music. You go slow first, you're like, okay, yeah, I got this. And then someone turns on a metronome, and you're like, oh my god, I don't got this. It's the same thing. Uchidachi comes at you, and you're like, oh, I thought I had this. Right? Work slow. Give yourself uh, training wheels. Build yourself up so that you can build up your uh, heart as well. It's important, right? The next type of really big tell we start to see is uh, decision leaning. In other words, I'm walking. I could be doing it. It doesn't matter. I'm walking. First step. I'm not going anywhere. Second step, I'm not going anywhere. Third step, I intend to go somewhere next step. Right? This, this forward break in posture. And oftentimes, it's towards the direction they intend to go or intend to evade to. So it's, it's very similar to the hips and the, the body weight shift that we talked about. But uh, in my experience with students, this is the hardest to break because it's the one that they're least aware of. Because like their hips, like maybe like, okay, yeah, you know, my hips are pointing, hips are pointing, hips are pointing, and they can kind of get it. Same way with their weight. Uh, when it comes to this lean, because this lean is felt basically in the small of the back, uh, and it, it's a place that we have a hard time bringing our attention to especially in sort of the beginning of uh, learning to, to shape our body for this kind of work. Uh, it can be very troublesome for, for beginners. And even for the, some intermediate guys, you'll see I'm like, <laughs> like it's, it can be pretty exaggerated. Um, try to avoid it, right? Set yourself Realize that your posture exists not because you're trying to hide your intentions from your opponent. There are aspects of that. Uh, but primarily, it serves so that you can move uh, anywhere you want, right? And be able to work. So that your position is adaptable and strong, resilient in the face of your opponent's attack, right? So as you work, you want to be strong, you want to be strong. And definitely, as you, you cross into that threshold where they are one count away from hitting you, right? You want to have your position adaptable and strong. Now, how does this relate to uh, hunting posture, right? Boom, boom, boom. The difference is consistency, right? Uh, again, we've talked about this a lot of time, but the human eye doesn't pick up objects. It picks up contrast between objects and contrasts between motion. So if we're standing one way and we change, it draws people's attention to it. Even if they can't intellectually reason out, oh, he leaned this way, he intends to do this, right? Uh, they can still, if they have any kind of uh, work experience, they still uh, grab the sense of it in their heart and begin to respond instinctively to it, right? But if I'm in my hunting posture, 
ba ba ba. I'm still there. Nothing's changed. It doesn't matter that I've approached that threshold, and he knows that we are going to have an exchange because we've come close. Because either I'm going to hit him or he's going to hit at me, right? He can't perceive which way I'm going because I haven't given him any information to uh, to allow him to guess, really, to, to guess accurately. Um, he can, of course, reason it out by understanding how cuts work and how uh, relation between bodies work. But if the other person has some crazy ninja bullshit, right, it might not work that way. So it's best not to rely on it unless it's uh, something uh, almost immutable, some very solid body structure. Anyway, that's, that's a big topic for a different day. <laughs> um, from there, of course, we get into uh, sort of moving up the body, obvious things, right? Uh, where they look at, right? You'll see this more uh, when you're doing uh, rondori, when you're when you're sparring with your partners, they'll start to look at what they want to hit. They're working, working, working. They got good ends on Nometsuke, and all of a sudden you'll see their eyes whoop, whoop, and just pull in tight on something. And usually, the moment it pulls in tight, you can hit them right there, just bam. And <laughs> because they're caught in that, I'm observing something, plotting, planning, waiting, they become. Uh, a little blind to everything else. It's not that they can't see it, it's that the time it takes them to interpret what they've seen uh, grows, right? So it's a good time to work uh, and learn to hit them in that Ken no Sin timing. Bam! You know, uh, just like Musashi says, right? When they think C in cut, right? I'm going to cut him, right? Bam! That's when you hit him, before it even begins to blossom into something recognizable as work. You catch by watching them uh, where their mind is. And this might seem, uh, you know, a little wooj wooj, but it's not. It's not. You're looking at their body. You're understanding how their body is positioned and what information is sort of leaking out of them, right? Um, and This skill seems like it would be something that is uh, quite difficult to obtain. Like, oh, you have to understand all these sub... For a little bit, throw your rational mind out onto a shelf somewhere. Just set it aside and just exist with the person, right? Just react to them and you'll find that your body is uh, quite intelligent, right? And uh, even if you lack the skill, to be able to respond to them in some meaningful and effective way, you can still perceive what's going to happen before it happens, right? Uh, with just just experience. I mean, just like maybe three months, you know, if you're actually paying attention to your partner. If you're in, if you're trying to learn how to sword fight inside your mind like by yourself, even when you're training with partners and you're just like, oh, what am I doing inside me? Oh, what's going on about me, 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 me? You're not gonna learn defense. You're, you're never going to be good because uh, combat, all, all fighting, all melee fighting is about uh, reciprocal interaction, right? It's about the interplay between two or more parties and until you begin to really put your mind, not here in you, not here in them, but here, in the middle, how you interact with your partner, how the sort of natural laws and mechanics and sort of the nature of interacting with a person in this fashion, uh, you're not going to be able to evolve past being able to hit them quickly, like a trick point sparring, kind of. Oh, I tagged you. I got you. I got you. Right. And of course, if what you're interested in is uh, just your own personal pleasure, no, no application at all, then you can do whatever the hell you want. 
if what you're interested in is only, uh, well, I'm interested in application, but only in the like context of one-on-one, -on -one unarmored dueling, then these light hits at very far distances, you know, are appropriate. But still, I think, I feel, my experience is that understanding and really focusing on that interaction is where you begin to develop what people call uh, internal power or superpower or whatever, right? It's, it's where you begin to understand something uh, so deeply that you're able to do things that look amazing to other people, even though they're very, very simple. Very, very simple. Like, almost nothing that we do is, is overly complex. It's, it's all very, very simple. Some of it's a lot of simple things together, but it's... nothing's... Anyway, a little bit of a digression there. <laughs> uh, kind of the, the last major point that you'll see is in the hands and shoulders, the parts that are going to strike. Generally, they will go, uh, just like everything else we've shown here, from a good state to an excited state, right? So if I'm coming to hit, I might be, boom, nice, good posture, I don't have any line showing, just boom, 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 boom. I step, boom, right? Gonna get you, gonna get you, right? And here I'm doing the lean too, as <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Right, and they just, uh, Right? And they, they get that feeling like, going for it, right? Uh, control this, right? Don't, um, uh, don't let your intention leak out so much, right? This kind of brings us to the subject of feints. And we certainly use feints in Yoho. I mean, our, our feints are more like cuts that we think have a low percentage chance of hitting, right? We're still trying to cut, right? We're still cutting, but with the relation that we're with with our, our partner, we understand that like, okay, this is a, an easy piece of work for, if he does nothing, he's gonna get cut, but it's an easy piece of work for him to uh, resolve. And our work is based on how their uh, resolution is most likely going to change this relation. Because if the relation stays the same, I'm in the same place where the best course of action is to, uh, or the most successful course of action is going to be to take this most likely not going to hit cut, right? So we're using it to warp the situation to provide us a different opportunity, a different relation with our partner, right? Um, but, uh, if your idea of fainting is something like this, ba, 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 it's, it's not going to work on people that know how to fight, right? People that are intent on working you, because this doesn't mean anything, right? Because again, uh, if Uchidachi in Arcata is here, we haven't stepped yet. Like, we, we have not begun our evasion. We are waiting, right? And that's part of why we study to wait, so that we're not blown around by any whim of Uchidashi or Tiki's movement, right? So, we're responding to work here. That being said, you can still, with skill and cunning, convince your opponent that you are going to create an action in one direction, have him respond to it as though he's attacking Kendo-sen, when really, you've led the attack, you've just held it in reserve to work in Taino-sen, or tataino sen even. Um, but the way you get to that skill is control. Control of your own form. In the beginning, 
we're sloppy and we're kind of just leaking out intention everywhere. Oh, I'm going here. Oh, I'm going there. Oh, I'm going here. Oh, I'm going here. And it becomes just, it's uh, ridiculous. As they progress, it becomes smaller and smaller, so they only have one once in a while. This is quite dangerous because it accentuates contrast, right? When you're just barfing what you're going to do all the time, it can become kind of like, uh, your opponent can become uh, a little numb to it. Of course, if they're any good, it's not going to last long enough <laughs> for it to reach that point, but still. Uh, once you marshal yourself and you're able to work under control, right where you want to be, with nothing uh, uh, exaggerated, nothing coming out, then you can shape their mind, shape how they perceive the situation, by giving them information, right? Whoop. And all of a sudden they think, oh god, here he's going, right? Here's this motion, and they prepare to meet you that way. And now, you come parallel to that motion, and you've changed their anticipated response. Now, this kind of uh, sort of higher level stuff is, uh, it is both tricky and finicky, like that the, the higher the work gets, the more of an edge case it tends to be. The more sophisticated it is, and the more it sort of requires all of the stars to be in line. Our basic work, our simple work, so I said, Kiryotoshi, These are so simple that they, you, a lot of stuff can go wrong, and you will still succeed. That's why they're taught in the beginning, right? Most success to uh, most dependent on your situation. Right? That's how most fighting methods teach, right? And Kyoho is no different. Uh, so, for stuff like this, you really have to develop a, a skill for reading your opponent's grade. Uh, and there, that's another big, whole long discussion in itself, so I'm not gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cut this video, I think. Uh, so, to surmise. When you're doing your practice, think about keeping yourself in control without the thought of where you're going to go next, right? Exist in the split instant, right here, right there, right here, right here, right? Up, to bop, to bop, to bop, right? In the beginning, when you start to do this, it will lead your work to be very segmented, right? Sort of clickety, clackety, clickety, click, right? But uh, just like with anything else, as you do it, work on relaxing, right? Until it becomes uh, fluid, natural, less contrived, right? When our body looks as though it's at ease, that's what it communicates to our opponent. And it is as infectious as yawning, right? And Musashi talks about this in the Goro no Show, uh, passing on, right? Passing on drunkenness or tiredness. Uh, you can pass on work with how the, the quality of your motion, even if everything else is the same. Um, this is a little bit more intermediate, but uh, it's a pebble in the mind, right? Think about it. Uh, and, as always, if you, <laughs> if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.